Hi, in this video I'm going to build a CO2 reactor for my 120 gallon discus tank. But before I get started on the actual assembly, I want to explain some of the thoughts going into the design. Number one, this is for a large aquarium. Most of the reactors on the market, actually all the reactors on the market, restrict the flow rate. So what I'm saying by that is they're designed for a narrower size tubing than the tubing that comes with an FX6. The outlet and inlet on an FX6 have a one inch diameter and the hosing that comes with an FX6 also has a one inch diameter. So I've seen people take market available products, CO2 reactors out there that you can buy online or in fish stores, and they're happy because they found a way to buy a flow restrictor or barbed fitting adapters that go from that one inch tubing down to a narrower tubing so that they can connect it to that CO2 reactor. We don't want to restrict the flow if possible. Part of the point of having an FX6 is having a higher flow rate especially when you have a larger aquarium. What I've done is designed a CO2 reactor that ensures that you maintain that one inch internal diameter flow rate all the way from the outlet of the canister through the CO2 reactor and then into the aquarium. Another reason I like this particular design is because it's very simple and it has a 100% dissolve rate. So there's no moving parts, there's nothing to tweak. You don't have to manage valves and things like that in order to make sure you're getting efficient dissolving of the CO2. You just hook it up to your flow from the uh, filter and into the tank and you're good to go. Another thing about this design is that it is very straight. So this is what many refer to as the Rex Griggs style CO2 reactor. And what I see a lot of people do with these is they use 90 degree elbows on the inlets and outlets. That's not too good either because those, in addition to being commonly a narrower diameter than the flow rate of the tubing, I should say the flow diameter, not rate. Um, the 90 degree causes the water to hit that wall and then start working its way the, another direction. Uh, the best way to build one of these kind of reactors is to allow the water to go straight. So, no angle on the inlet. So the outlet also should have a straight through flow and not introduce a 90 degree elbow or fitting that will change the direction of the water in a drastic way. So what I'm using is street elbows and the PVC piping. So the water will go straight down into the reactor, but when it's coming back out, my return hose that goes to the tank is, is needing to go up through the cabinet and into the tank. So instead of uh, having to bend that hosing from a downward pointing bar fitting, I'm actually going through the PVC pipe into a 90 degree sweeping elbow into another 90 degree sweeping elbow and then you have the one inch internal diameter barbed fitting so that the hose that's connected to that can go straight up and out into the tank. The water should be able to flow easily through those 90 degree sweeping street elbows without causing any uh, restriction to the flow. The other thing about this design is I'm making it as tall as possible from the top to the bottom based on what the inside of my cabinet will allow so that I can have comfortable room for the hosing that's connected to either side and then maximize the space inside the reactor so that the CO2 bubbles won't be able to work their way all the way from where they're coming in to the bottom and then work and then go out into the tank. They should be dissolved before they reach the bottom of the reactor so the longer the reactor the better. But I want to leave enough space in my cabinet to be able to move the reactor. And, and when I say move the reactor, if I were to for some reason get some gas buildup at the top of the reactor to where I can hear it kind of turning around in there more than normal, I can just take the reactor and tilt it and then all the gas will flow up and out into the tank and then put the reactor back into its normal upright position and continue with the dissolving of CO2 without having a large gas pocket inside. I like the idea of being able to tilt the reactor to release the gas, 
better than the idea of having a gas relief valve because I want this thing to be sealed and minimize the chance of leaking. All right, so that's enough for now. Let's go ahead and start building that thing. Okay, this is the reactor with all the pieces kind of dry fitted together. But I'll go ahead and start taking them all off because we need to get them permanently assembled. Got a couple of sweeping 90 degree elbows. Cut this two inch cylinder to about 13 inches. Got the one inch hose barb with the one and a quarter inch threading. Two inch piece of PVC. This is a sanitary tee with a one and a half inch reducer from a two inch. And then this piece, this is a one and a half by three quarter inch. And then this is a three quarter by half inch. And then here's a couple of brass pieces that are gonna fit into that. This is for the CO2 tubing. I don't want to put PVC glue in and have these pieces curing after they're assembled and then go in on top of that and start putting pressure while it's uncured with trying to screw things in tightly. So we'll go ahead and start with all the threaded pieces first. All right, so this is uh, the brass fittings and we'll use some Teflon tape. Now I'll put this piece into this piece. And a little bit more Teflon tape. Now we'll take this one inch closed bar. to the piece of PVC. All right, so I made sure that all the pieces were real clean. Some of these had stickers on them and I got all the goo off from having taken the stickers off. And so now I'm going to go ahead and start doing the gluing of the PVC pieces together. So you got to make sure that you do primer on both sides of the pieces of PVC that you're gluing together. And it's also a good practice to go ahead and apply glue to both sides. I don't know if I can get the lid off of that one. Let's see. It's all tight. Just using this piece of styrofoam to protect my workbench surface from the glue. Alright, so thinking through it, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and put the brass fitting piece into there. But first, we have to put this into this. So let's go ahead and start with that. push it in. Now we don't want to do a lot of twisting of the pieces, you just want to push it on and leave it. If you start twisting it, the cement starts to do its thing and you can kind of 
damage the integrity of the join by doing twisting with this stuff. So now we'll put this piece in here. So here's the assembled CO2 reactor, and I just wanted to point out one thing about this uh, sanitary T right here. So the CO2 will be coming in here, and we want to make sure that since the water is flowing this way, that this T is sweeping downward. Imagine if this was the opposite where the water was flowing this way. Well, if the water was flowing this way, you see how it would want to go in there? Instead, we want to have it downward. So as the water's going down, it's sort of pulling from here instead of trying to flow into there. So the CO2 will be coming in through here, and all the bubbles will be in here, and the water will be going down like this, and the CO2 bubbles will be trying to rise upward, but the downward current of the water will constantly sort of uh, cause the CO2 bubbles to dissolve into the water as they're trying to rise up against the current. The bubbles should never be able to make it all the way down here and up into the tank. So, you know, if this was clear, you'd probably see bubbles kind of in this area as they continue to try to rise up against the downward current. So, downward sweeping T, pulling from the CO2 injection area, that's what you want to do. 